Okay, good morning. It's Sunday, April 12th, and I continue to work on the Q31 quarantine project. This is what I'm working on this morning. Um, I want to put an RF amplifier between the bandpass filter and the diode ring mixer. And I am following the lead of my good friend Farhan, VU2 ESE, and I am stealing, blatantly stealing, from his um, cir the circuit that he used in the BIDX40 module. You can see here, here, where's my finger? Hold on. That's hard. <laughs> there it is. He, that's the, uh, the end of the bandpass filter on the BIDX40. This is the RF amplifier, and this is the diode ring mixer at the front end of the BIDX40 module. So I'm just going to take his amplifier stage build it and put it ahead of my diode ring mixer. And so usually what I start doing when I'm building something like this, you'll see I have uh, taken and drawn little squares around different parts of the circuit. And that is where I intend to put my Manhattan style pads on the board. So I can see I need some junctions there. Obviously I need a pad for the emitter, pad, bigger pad for the base, small pad for the collector, pad for the input, a um, couple pads all around. So I then I go down and I place the pad. Well, actually what I do then, I'll show you. This is the board. And you can see how I've gone through with a pencil before I did any of this and just sort of penciled onto the board where I was going to place the pads and what they were going to do. I'd even pencil in some of the components where they were going to be. Then I go down, and with some super glue, I put the pads down on the board. Next, I go through and I put the resistors that I need down, put the resistors down. Then I go through and I put the bypass, capa well, the capacitors I want to put in there. Fortunately, these were all 0.1 microfarad caps that Farhan had in his circuit. So I put them all in there. Then finally, I go in and put the transistor in, all right? In my case, I used a 2N3904, all right? Then, when I got it all soldered in, it comes time to test the stage, all right? So here's where you start comparing input and output. And when I first tested, this is the input from my uh, HP scope, and it's got a, a 9.65 megahertz signal. So I started taking a look at the input compared to the output, and as is often the case when you're building something, <laughs> it didn't look like it was working. It really didn't look like it was working. Something was significantly wrong. I was not getting amplification from this stage. This is the benefit of testing a stage before you move forward. Make sure this stage is right before you move forward. You know what I did? This is a very important resistor here, this one. This is the resistor for the emitter this is the, the feedback resistor it goes through the capacitor. This resistor actually sets the current, but this is the one that provides the amount of feedback, and this is the where the actual the RF, this is what the RF will see. I had this one on this pad over here, just floating in space, doing nothing, and this capacitor was not connected to anything. The amplifier won't amplify very well if that's the case. So I just moved this one over here, boom, and I checked, and then I saw, okay, now I'm getting good amplification. Now, how did I check that? You can see my calculations down here. Um, from the HP 8640, without the amplifier feeding directly into a 47 ohm resistor, I was getting 69 millivolts RMS. Then I moved the HP 8640 across, put the input to the amplifier with the amplifier and measured the output across the same resistor, and I had 351 millivolts RMS. Took the log, multiplied by 20, and saw about 14 dB of gain from this stage, which is what you'd expect. All right, now I want to see how it's going to work with the diode ring mixer. So at this point, I connect the capacitor. This is the output from the amplifier. It goes right to the input, the RF input of the diode ring mixer. Now I start comparing 
output from a diode ring mixer at 455 KC with and without the amplifier I just built. First, I take the 8640 uh, amplifier, 8640 SIG generator, and put it here. I take this cap out of the circuit, just lift it off the pad. Put the 8640 right there and measure how much 455 KC energy I'm getting out. Then, I put this amplifier circuit in, put the, uh, the signal here into the amplifier, and measure how much output I'm getting with the amplifier in the circuit. And I'll show you what I got up here. So here I'm measuring 455 KC out. Without the amplifier, I was getting about 36 millivolts RMS at 455 KCs. With the amplifier in the circuit, I'm getting 175 millivolts RMS, 455 KC. So you do the math, it's real simple. Divide this by this, take the log, multiply by 20, because we're dealing with voltages. And that gives about 13.7 dB gain, which matches up nicely with what I got down here, our 14 dB gain from the whole thing. Very, very satisfying. Now, I wanted to do this carefully. This is, this is actually a good thing for me to build today because when I get to the IF stages, I am once again going to rob the circuitry from Farhan. I'm going to build two IF amplifiers using IF amplifiers similar to the ones that he used in the BIDX40 module. You can see it's essentially the same feedback amplifier using a BJT transistor. And then I'm going to go right into the 10 kilohertz 455 KC ceramic filter. I might use a little L network to do an impedance match to the filter. I did that before with the HRO dial receiver and it worked out pretty well. But this has been a pretty satisfying morning. It's been great. It's always happy when you build an amplifier that actually amplifies. And you can see the results there. There it is. There's the 455 KC energy coming out of uh, my diode ring mixer at a higher level than it would have yesterday. It's not probably not apparent because of the, uh, the scale. But I like to do this too. Let me turn off the, uh, the VFO. Boom. Boom. No 455 KC. There it is. It's back. That's what it's all supposed to do. So the front end is starting to look good. And also I have a great confidence in the circuitry because it worked so well in the BIDX40 module. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, stay safe. Stay inside. Stay in the shack. 7-3.